All right. Welcome back to the Copywriters Podcast with your host, the world's greatest copywriting coach, David Garfinkel. David, how are you doing today? Nathan, I'm good. How about you? I'm doing all right. And you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start off this episode by saying we're past 100 episodes now. And one thing that you have consistently amazed me with is your transition into the copy is powerful part of the show. Every single time you've got a really nice way to smoothly go from the, the intro hook of the show into the, what normally would be the very boring legalese aspect of the show, which is our, our little disclaimer. Um, and I know personally that, uh, a hundred times, a hundred plus times now you've, per, you've, masterfully crafted a transition and as a copywriter I know that one of the biggest things people struggle with is transitions and so I was like hey David can we please do a show on transitions well you don't expect me to do anything different today with that transition do you <laughs> I don't good I'll try not to let you down okay so let's let's jump into it this week's episode is the greased shoot trick what does that mean well a long time ago i was driving around new york's orange county it's on the west side of the state and the highway went into a small town and before i knew it there was a car with flashing lights behind me and the cop walked up to my window and he said do you know why i stopped you and I told him I didn't. And he said, I was 20 miles per hour over the speed limit. Right. Speed trap. So as he wrote me the ticket, he asked me what I did for a living. And I said, I was a writer. And he said, that's interesting. I teach freshman English at the local community college. And I have some advice for you, young man. When you come into town, there was a sign that said speed limit 25. But you didn't make a good transition. And so now you're getting this. And he hands me the ticket. <laughs> now, to be transparent about this, Nathan, I don't know if Officer Crumpke actually gave me a ticket or imagined this whole thing so vividly that it seems like it was yesterday. <laughs> but I do know that as a copywriter, if you don't make good transitions, it's going to cost you money, even more than a speeding ticket. And here's something else I know. Copy is powerful. You're responsible for how you use what you hear in this podcast. Most of the time, common sense is all you need. But if you make extreme claims and or if you're writing copy for offers in highly regulated industries like health, finance, and business opportunity, you may want to get a legal review after you write and before you start using your copy. My larger clients do this all the time. So this is important, and I don't think people talk about it enough. How do you lose readers? What makes sales crater? Well, of course, you've got to know your avatar. You've got to do your research. You've got to have a good idea. But you can do all of that, but without the grease shoot, you're really tempting fate. Here's why. The confused reader does not buy. The reader who gets distracted does not buy. The reader who struggles to understand what you've written does not buy. And the reader who stops reading certainly does not buy, unless they're jumping all the way to the order button. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm saying the reader says, I can't understand this. Forget it. You have to have the clearest, cleanest writing in the world. Let's say you do. Let's say you have the clearest, cleanest writing in the world in each section. But if one section does not flow seamlessly into another, you could be in trouble. So what we are talking about, like Officer Crumpke was talking about, is smooth transitions. There are complicated ways of looking at these, but we're going to make it easy. The key is to make it seem in the moment that you're not changing the subject at all, even if you are, and yet at the same time, keeping what you're writing varied and interesting and exciting and easy to read. So 
why does everyone struggle so much with this? Um, I've never heard anyone teach this way. So as to explain both what to do and how to do it, there's a strategy to transitions and a psychology. And without getting overwhelming about it, the simple truth is you want to transition from one topic to another in the way people do in real life when they're at their best. Uh, I know I've talked before about the time I went to a Starbucks, put on some earbuds and started pretending to be taking notes on a lecture and I was actually listening to people talk. And it's amazing how they go all over the place and it's not well organized and they're repetitive and imprecise and all the things a writer can't do. But there are certain things they do to transition from one part of a topic to another that we can use in our copy. And I found, in fact, that there are three main ways people do it in everyday conversation. So, yeah. Before we jump into the three main ways, I think a big pain point that a lot of copywriters have, even uh, longtime copywriters, is that when we learn how to write copy, we usually learn it in a, we need to have this section. First, we have a headline, then we have a hook, then we have a benefit, and then we have a bullet points. So we're taught the pieces, but we, we usually aren't taught the glue that holds those pieces together. And so a lot of times it's kind of like a, a, an awkward jump because there's like a hard stop and then a hard start to the next point of the, of the sales letter. Yeah, that's absolutely right. We need to learn that structure first or the copy is going to be all over the place. And yet the one piece that's missing is how do you connect it with the glue? So it just seems seamless and one section seems perfectly well connected to another. And, I, and, and that's, that's why this is a great idea on your part to do this. And I think it's, that's why it's so necessary. So let's say there are three ways to do it. And to demonstrate these, I'm going to take two paragraphs from an imaginary sales letter I haven't written yet about my own services, about critique services. And I'd say these paragraphs are on their own pretty good, but they really have nothing to do with each other. And then I want to go through three different types of transitions with examples and we'll see if we can join them together so it just seems like they're peas in a pod and it's not a mutated pod, it's a <laughs> smooth pod because there are all kinds of pods, you know. Okay, so here's paragraph one. When you write copy, often you're so close to it that it's hard to see the forest for the trees. Sometimes it's all forest, too general, and sometimes it's all trees, too mind-numbingly specific. I think I shouldn't have pronounced the B in numb, right? Mind-numbingly specific. And here's paragraph two. I've done critiques for writers in eight-figure companies, and I've also boosted the selling power of copy for one-person companies. It doesn't matter to me whether you're internationally known or only in a narrow niche, because the important thing is that you are delivering an effective sales message to one person at a time. Okay, those are both good. They have nothing to do with each other, do they? No, that if, if in the average sales letter, that would be the thing where I hit a hard stop, and all of a sudden it feels like a jerking motion into the next section. Okay, so let's see if we can smooth it out. Uh, because the first paragraph, it's about writing at a 30,000-foot view versus writing down in the weeds. And the second one is about the size of companies my clients have. And on the face of it, they have nothing to do with each other. So the first kind of transition to make this a greased shoot, and obviously you want to make the whole sales piece a greased shoot, but now we're just talking about the transition from the first paragraph to the second one or from any one paragraph to any other when you've changed your subject. The first kind of transition is a logical transition. 
Now, logic is very compelling in moving the reader along, but it can also come across as incredibly stuffy or cold or distant, or I'm going to say a really bad word here, Cartesian. Um, and so how do you use logic effectively without coming across as stuffy or aloof? The answer is by using ordinary sounding phrases that set up a rational sounding transition. Logic is also very credible. It appeals to the rational mind. So by using a logical transition, you boost the credibility of your letter a little bit. So here are four phrases that are seemingly very logical. First one is, the reason I bring this up is, okay, and now we're talking about a reason. Second one is, therefore, which is part of a concluding argument. Third one is, here's why this should matter to you. The word why has to do with a reason. And the fourth is, I'm telling you this because, and because, again, implies a reason. Now, notice that every one of those are things people say all the time. Maybe not therefore as much, but the other three, the reason to bring this up, here's why this should matter to you, I'm telling you this because, all of those are fairly everyday conversational speeches. They don't sound like they're, you know, out of Professor Dingle Dunderhead's logic course or anything. <laughs> I love the professor name that you came up with and the officer's name that you came up with. Um, what I really like about those transitions is I see people, especially when they're struggling for transitions, sometimes they'll write like a whole paragraph or two paragraphs to try and transition from one section to another. And you did it with like four words. Yeah. Thanks. So let me use one of these in those two paragraphs and let's see if they fit together a little better. When you write copy, Often, you're so close to it that it's hard to see the forest for the trees. So sometimes it's all forest, too general, and sometimes it's all trees, too mind-numbingly specific. I'm telling you this because I've done critiques for writers in eight-figure companies, and I've also boosted the selling power of copy for one-person companies. It doesn't matter to me whether you're internationally known or only in a narrow niche, because the important thing is that you are delivering an effective sales message to one person at a time. Yeah, it, it totally joined those two almost separate ideas just by saying, I'm telling you this because. Right. Now, it doesn't really make much sense when you think about it. The, the, the logic may, doesn't make much sense. It doesn't matter. It's like, I want to get this point across, and I want to get this point across, and I don't want to lose you in the transition. Mm -hmm. And the reader just naturally kind of dips from one into the other. It's not like a hard stop there. You know, Cialdini did a, an experiment which he talks about in his book, Influence, where there was somebody standing in line to use a Xerox and a, a photocopy machine. And they would say, could I get in front of you? And... Most of the time people say, no, stand in line like me. But if they said, could I get in front of you because I'm in a hurry? They would go, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Sure, go ahead. Sometimes the word because is all it takes. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, imagine the person came in and said, I'm in a hurry. Can I get in front of you? You'd probably say, uh, screw off, right? So, But when you use the word because and use a nicer tone of voice, it's going to make a difference. All right, let's move on to the next one. The next one is the comparison transition. And this is like using a metaphor, but it's a lot simpler, and frankly, it's easier to do. It's a powerful technique. And rather than a metaphor, it's technically called a simile. That doesn't matter. I just want to give you a frame to understand what you're about to hear. Here are the phrases. And just like, in the same way that, or you could say it a little differently, and it's really no different then, but this is only the tip of the iceberg. Okay, those are your comparison transitions. 
and they're great for connecting paragraphs that aren't too much like each other by inventing a little similarity. So let's try one out with our two paragraphs. When you write copy, often you're so close to it that it's hard to see the forest for the trees. Sometimes it's all forest, too general, and sometimes it's all trees, too mind-numbingly specific. And just like you need to shift gears from the forest to the trees, many times I've shifted from working with a giant organization to working with a small business in the same day. You see, I've done critiques for writers in eight-figure companies, and I've also boosted the selling power of copy for one-person companies. It doesn't matter to me whether you're internationally known or only in a narrow niche, because the important thing is that you're delivering an effective sales message to one person at a time. What do you think? All right. I'm going to give you a little bit of pushback. And not really pushback. I'm going to say it works. But I think that uh, depending on what it is that you're, that you're trying to transition, maybe one size doesn't fit all. And sometimes you have to figure out, does the logical one work better here? Does the comparison one work better here? Or does the third one that we're going to get into in a second work better here? I think that's a great point, and I agree with you. I was trying to shoehorn this in, and yeah, you need to try a lot of different ones till you find the one that works best. But between two other, if we, if we had endless time and we had endless paragraphs, between two other paragraphs, a comparison, a comparison transition will work perfectly. So it really depends on what the situation is. Yeah. All right. So let's go to your transition type number three, which is random phrases that work. There are a few random sounding phrases that work like a charm. And sometimes transitions are a lot simpler than you think, but you have to use the right words. So here are five really good ones. Do you qualify? Despite what you may have heard, don't worry. It's simple. Now get this. I mean, Nathan, as I'm talking to you with these transitions, I almost feel like I'm talking to you as opposed to reading a list. They're, <laughs> they're, they're so good, right? They're so conversational. It's like, yeah, I might just say that. Right? All right, let, let, let's try it out on the paragraphs. Um, when you write copy, often you're so close to it that it's hard to see the forest for the trees. So sometimes it's all forest, too general, and sometimes it's all trees, too mind-numbingly specific. Now, you may be wondering, do you qualify to work with me? Don't worry. I've done critiques for writers in eight-figure companies, and I've also boosted the selling power of copy for one-person companies. It doesn't matter to me whether you're internationally known or only in a narrow niche, because the important thing is that you are delivering an effective sales message to one person at a time. Nice. I actually use two of them, right? It, I mean, the stuff's almost hypnotic. You can't even hear it. But um, the first one is, do you qualify? And the second one is, don't worry. Mm. Like, people say that all the time. They might not say, do you qualify? But they might say that to themselves. Gee, I wonder if I'd be allowed to do this, I want, right? Or they, or they, or they, or if you're trying to get in a Facebook group, gosh, I wonder if they'll let me in. Or if you run a Facebook group, does this person qualify? Right. Th these are just things people say all the time. When you boil them down to these little phrases people use all the time, it makes the transition so much easier. So let me review them. Okay. Uh, before, before we do that, I want to add two cents real quick. Sure. So I really like the one that you said, and you didn't use it as an example, but you said, uh, now get this. I like that one. I use that one sometimes. I also use, here's the deal. And I think those two are kind of my crutch transitions. I probably lean on them a little bit too much. Having all the different ones that you laid out in this week's episode at my disposal will help me pick and choose if I, if I say, okay, I'm using now get this too much. or I'm using here's the deal too much because I don't want to use it more than once or twice in a sales letter. Um, having a bunch of different ones to pick and choose from is very helpful. Oh, that's good. Okay, well, 
Glad, glad to know you're actually doing this. Um, it's sort of proof of concept. Okay, so let's do our review now. First, the logic transitions, and there's four of them. The reason I bring this up, therefore, here's why this should matter to you, and I'm telling you this because, right? Then the comparison transitions. And just like, in the same way that, or you could say it a little differently, and it's really no different than, but this is only the tip of the iceberg. And finally, the random phrase transitions. Do you qualify? Despite what you may have heard? Don't worry. It's simple. Now get this, and your contribution will add to the list. Here's the deal. <laughs> nice. Yeah, so that's it. Awesome, David. Again, a fantastic episode. I think if I could give a recommendation to people, really focus on, and what I see people most of the time screw up their transition is into their offer. A lot of times it gets real awkward. I've seen this, especially on webinars and VSLs. It gets really awkward and they don't know how to make that smooth transition. So go over the list of things and especially the logic ones and the random phrases ones, those ones really seem to work, but figure out which one works the best. And uh, now you've got a whole, a whole arsenal of different transitions to use to smoothly go from one section of copy to the next. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Um, that that is where people screw up the most, and that's where people get nervous too. Is um, when they get into the close. Mm -hmm. So let's show them how to get into the close. It's easy to do. Just do it. Absolutely, David. Another fantastic episode. Thank you so much, man. Uh, any idea on what we're going to have next week? Um, yeah, I have something I'm working on. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to to turn it into a podcast, but it's about the three ways the creative mind thinks. And I'm almost certain no one who hasn't read Kessler has ever heard of this before. I only learned about the book three weeks ago. Nice. All right. Until then, make sure that you're heading over to the Copywriters Podcast website over at copywriterspodcast.com. Download more Copywriters Podcast episodes, get your copywriting fix, and start getting more sales from your sales letters today. We'll catch you later. Catch you later.